Welcome back to the Football Terrace. Some big transfer stories to update you on involving Chelsea and Arsenal. Plus, big updates into the thematic review and future of Manchester United. Of course, hit like buttons and subscribe. And I'm really looking forward to reading your comments below. I wanted to start with Chelsea this morning. They, they had a fantastic result last night in the Premier League. Probably the best performance in, I said in two years. I've had a lot of Chelsea fans say no, Terry three years since we have been that good and they were absolutely fluid the football was just beautiful the finishing was great Carl Palmer shone absolutely shone uh, scoring four goals as well and some interesting news for them about the future of Chelsea we know that the club have come out publicly and said we will be complying for the next 12 months or so with FFP and profit and sustainability there is going to be money to spend they've sold big assets to get there we're going to cover that more on the top six show later today. But Chelsea are going to go into the market this summer. They're going to sell some players and they're looking to buy new individuals. A player that's come up and emerged is a really interesting one. Saw him play fantastically well against Liverpool in the Europa League last Thursday. And that is Cup Miners. Currently, of course, plays for um, Atalanta. Chelsea was scouting him during that game and will continue to monitor him for the rest of this season is he is a player of real interest to them. And what I think is really intriguing about this individual is he's multifaceted. He can play in a deeper central midfield role. He can also play in the attacking elements as well. But there's goals in him. And I think this is what's really key for Chelsea. They are looking for players, whether they're midfielders, inside forwards, wide players, central central strikers. They're looking for players who have an eye for goal or that can really help create more goals. The defensive issues, that will be addressed. But still, I know six goals were scored last night. The lack of conversion, the lack of goals has been an issue. And the reason why looking at Cup Miners from Atalanta is so important is they're a team that loves to score goals. And he is a very key component in that. So this is a real interesting one for me. Again, as a rival of Chelsea, but neutral to the situation, looking at real talented player and an excellent age. This is the bit that stands out for me above and beyond everything else. He's 26 years old. Chelsea need players of this ilk. 25s, 26s, 27s, experienced. They've got know-how. They're grown up. You know, their frontal lobe is fully formed. They probably won't be arguing over penalties and things like that. That element is going to be key for the growth of Chelsea. Yes, they've got, they've got financial issues. Yes, they're currently nowhere near where they want to be the amount of money they invest and the wages they pay. The young players, some of them will really improve in the next 12, 18 months, two years, but they need experience around them. And this could be the player they turn to. Now, moving on to Arsenal. First of all, this comes exclusively from Fabrizio Romano, that Arsenal could target a new left back this summer, but nothing uh, has been discussed with Zinchenko yet. Well, for me, I love Fabrizio Romano. I love what he does that they will be looking at covering those fullback areas. Arsenal, 110% are looking in those areas. There's huge question marks over Zinchenko. It's been a very poor season over, overall from him. And Arsenal have raised their standards in the last few years. Players have to continue performing or you drop down the pecking order or you're sold. It doesn't matter. I agree that year one, Gabriel Jesus and Zinchenko helped to elevate Arsenal to another level. But it's almost as if the level of Arsenal has then gone above them and they've really struggled. doesn't mean both should be... So, I know play, Arsenal fans right now are angry. They've both got a goal, go. They should never play for us again. That might be a little bit of an overreaction due to the emotions of losing against Aston Villa. But they certainly need to be looking at additional fullback cover. You don't know how Timber's going to be when he comes back. He'll probably be okay, but you never quite know. Zinchenko's had a stinker of a season. And Tomiyasu, there are some injury concerns there. So it's definitely an area that they're going to be considering. I think talking to Sinchenko is irrelevant. You don't need to talk to Sinchenko. I don't think the club's going to consult him. They didn't speak to Thomas Partey about them wanting Declan Rice. They just improved their midfield area. But I do think it's a key component for Arsenal to focus on, as is the striking options. As we know, Arsenal were drawing up a list of players um, that they would offer uh, to Sporting Lisbon as part of a deal for Victor Yukores. He appears to be one of their leading targets. We know that Ivan Tony is a player 
who has been huge attention from Arsenal on. The asking price seemingly now could be as low as 30 to 40 million pounds, which is a far cry from the 80 to 90 million that was being quoted in January. But another report was emerged today, which I find really interesting from Sammy McBell. And that's that Ollie Watkins is on a list of strikers, striker targets this summer by Arsenal. It does state, However, given his wages and the fee, which would be in excess of 70 million and his long-standing contract, um, Arsenal's monitoring is likely to lead nowhere. I never really agree with the reason why I don't agree with this. And uh, Samuel McBell is an excellent journalist. The reason why I don't think it might not lead anywhere is that Arsenal are a bigger club than Aston Villa. Aston Villa are in a great position right now and the player might decide he wants to stay. But there's also big talk over the needing to sell players to raise money for FFP. They're currently a team who, if, if they, it, it, Champions League football is going to help them because it's going to raise their income. But as it stands right now, they are way over the limit to comply with UEFA's and the Premier League's new profit and sustainability and FFP rules. There's been talk all season that they're going to have to sell players. And if Arsenal do have the money and can convince the player, it certainly could go somewhere. However, what I would say is it does appear through the readings that Yulkulest is more of an option. And, of course, Arsenal are linked uh, with Jimenez as well. And I think that Arsenal are looking at multiple players. I think whoever they go after, they've got a great chance of getting. But they just need to weigh up how much money they've got, who's going to cost the most, how impactful is that player going to be, and what other areas need to be addressed. If Ollie Watkins takes up too much of the budget, but they could go and get Ivan Tony for 40 million, and then still have a lot of money to improve that defence, especially those fullback areas, that may be where they focus. But Arsenal fans, when it comes to Sinchenko, when it comes to your striker options, fullback options as well, what would you personally like to see Arsenal do this summer? Now, moving up north and, and to my club, Manchester United, two interesting um, pieces here from uh, Graham Bailey today. That First of all, Sir Jim Ratcliffe wants Dan Ashworth to start work for Manchester United in June to help uh, facilitate the club's big moves in the summer. Ashworth will also be uh, key in the decision-making around a coach. I, I still feel, I mean, I was told by a journalist I, only quite a while ago now, four or five weeks ago, that things were moving in the right direction with that deal. Newcastle still pushing for £20 million pounds worth of compensation. I felt all along that somewhere in the middle was going to be reached seven to £10 million pound, uh, would end up being what's paid and Ashworth would, will come in. And I think that's why when it comes to who United are going to go for in relation to the next manager, I think a lot of the work is already going on. Ashworth is on gardening leave. Wilcox is on gardening leave. They, they're all, in my opinion, they're already working without it being official. They're never going to admit this because there'd be legal ramifications. But in the cold, hard light of day, this is going on. But it's really good to see Sir Jim pushing for this. It also turns out that Sir Jim has been angered looking at, looking at the Man United squad due to the leaks that have come out the squad, due to the social media use of some of the players. And these are elements that do need to be addressed. These are elements that the club has got to fix. You can't just be unhappy with your manager and leak information. Equally, the club has got to get itself on an even keel where players know what kind of football they're coming into play. It's not chopping and changing. that Everybody's happy. But at the same time, I keep saying to people, it's so multi-layered the issues at Man United. Just because the manager is, I understand why the players are unhappy with the manager doesn't mean they should be leaking things on the internet. You know, this, this sort of world of two wrongs don't make a right is so key. And I think that it's imperative that the structure, this is what Man United fans should be focusing on right now, more than sell Bruno, more than, oh my God, Martial's leaving. The structure of the club is key. We, In my personal opinion, the manager is gone. He is a dead man walking in terms of his job. But getting this structure fixed, getting the Ashworths in, the Wilcox in, settling things down, deciding which players are right for the club, which are not. How are we going to play football? Who is the manager that's going to start this journey off for us? Who are the individuals? You might have a player that you really want to keep. But when you tell them the plans for the club, they might go, but that's just not my style of football. Or I don't want to play for this guy. Or that isn't where I want to be. Fine, you sell them, you move on. The thematic review is underway. And if you've never been part of a thematic deep dive review into an organization, a sports team, a, a big business. These things take time. You need to be meticulous. You have to overturn every stone. That's why I push back against United fans that say, well, this has all been going on now since December, January. Why have we, why have we not seen massive change yet? 
because I'm going to give you this saying that I was taught when I was younger, and it serves you well in life. Measure twice, cut once. And essentially what that means is be absolutely sure of what you're doing before you do it. What you don't want to do is cut too early and you cut the piece of wood too long or too short, and then you're in trouble. It's a DIY expression. That's what United are doing right now. We are uncovering and unturning every So We're not just listening to the players and going, oh, yeah, it's the manager. We're not just listening to the manager and go, yeah, those two, three players are bad. They're testing it. They're putting acid tests on everybody. Will they fix the club? Will they make us a powerhouse again? That remains to be seen. But Man United fans have got to keep their cool. Man United fans have got to stop showing their ass. Man United fans have got to wait and see. The player links, the new manager links. For me, that's all secondary to watching what we do with the structure. And everything we're seeing and hearing about it, in my personal opinion, is exactly where it needs to be. And for what it's worth, and you guys can take this with a pinch of salt if you want, the fact that the first thing Ineos have addressed since they've come in is the area that I view as the biggest issue and the reason why we are where we are is why I'm backing it. Now, that could be confirmation bias. I'm very aware of that. But for me, I think we're addressing the right areas. Maybe that's why I'm a bit more relaxed than other Man United fans are. But give me your thoughts and your feelings in the comment section below. Until next time, people, take care. Goodbye. God bless. And I'll see you soon. Peace.